I'm Luther Kruger, uh, Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking, based in Minneapolis. I'm here with Megan Smith with the Wonder Oven, or a, co a company, uh, with the uh, retained heat cooker. And the crossover, of course, is obvious to anyone that does solar cooking, if they've had encounters with Solar Cookers International or uh, the Solar Education Project, mm -hmm. where they talk about integrated cooking, where you mm -hmm. want to have a backup and something that extends the time, say the clouds rolling and so forth. So mm -hmm. when I saw your company, and I know there's like four or five different ones, there's one in South Africa that I interviewed online. Oh, okay. And uh, we're mm -hmm. putting together a class mm -hmm. on solar cooking, and one whole section is on integrated cooking, and particularly the hay basket and fireless cookers. Awesome. So, but the first question I always have is, how did you get into this? Where, where did it first start and how did it end up ratcheting up to that level, that order of magnitude where you actually started a company and selling it? Yeah, well, so I've been cooking with it now for about 20 years, almost, just about 20 years. Um, but what happened was um, I bought all my food storage. I had a friend of mine who was, uh, had a lot, I had, I'm a mom of five kids, so that's basically my story. There you go. Yes. <laughs> what a love for, of a mother will do for her kids. That's what I, that's why. But um, I had a friend who ha who decided to go on a, a year, she said at the beginning, of only eating her food storage to see if she could actually do it. And so I watched her for about six months and then she quit. <laughs> but I watched her for about six months do it. And she actually also has a blog and I'd be happy to share that information with you in the link. Um, but um, I watched her do it, but um, it was a whole ton of work for her and she just, um, she was making food all day long. It took all the work, po possible energy that she had just to get. And then besides that, the problem was is that the kids um, didn't like a lot of the things that she made. And in my situation, I had my oldest um, is allergic to um, peanuts and beans. And beans are like a huge staple in oh, yeah. food storage. And so that part wouldn't work for me. And a lot of the stuff she was doing was with beans and with bean flour and, and different things like that. And so um, I pause because it's like freak I see how how hard she's working and she is giving every single bit of energy she has she, she has to test out the recipes as she goes and so I decided in my situation especially where I didn't have access to all of the things that she could use um, I had to really get organized and so I started testing out recipes um, I had I knew that I wanted to use a wonder oven um, or retained heat cooker um, and as part of my preparations because I thought it was so amazing and it was so cool. Um, but what happened is I tested out recipes almost, well, every week almost, um, for almost more than a little bit, more than two years uh, with, with the recipes. And my, my website is myfoodstoragecookbook.com. And so all of my website, all of my recipes are on that, housed in that website if anyone wants to find it. Um, but I, by practicing so frequently and working so hard and I included solar, solar cooking as well as well as wonder oven cooking I realized that it wasn't just a cool amazing thing to have it was actually a really essential thing that you have to have um, because honestly um, once I figured out how much fuel it takes to cook um, I'm absolutely convinced that people will run out of fuel before they run out of food and then we'll have a real crisis uh, where we really can't dig ourselves out if we don't get prepped prepared prepared ahead of time so sure. yeah and, uh, what what uh what said okay i'm gonna make one design one sell it uh promote it through um i well after i finished my recipes on my website i was honestly afraid for people um mm -hmm. everywhere i was really afraid for people because i know people are storing food and they're doing all that they can but there aren't people out there who are usually um, willing to spend more than two years testing recipes to the extent that I have. And so they don't know. Yeah. They just don't know. And so what I did as soon as I finished up my re recipes about um, two months later, um, <laughs> it was kind of funny. I, um, I just had our fifth baby and um, we had made a payment in the medical office for something and we didn't need to. And so I all of a sudden had an $800 windfall of money that came through okay. from the doctor's that office that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> and so I decided I was going to use that money towards fabric. And I had a, we lived in Houston at the time, and I had a, a source for foam down there. And so I sewed up, I think I had, 
I don't remember, like 50 or 60 Wonder Ovens over the summer. That was in the spring, and then I, I sewed them and got them all ready all through the summer. And then on Labor Day, I offered them on my website for cost, um, and people bought them for cost, and I got them started to ship out that way. Um, and then I also had a multiple, like many different groups who I'd already been starting to teach classes to, um, organizing sewing groups and things like that, big sewing projects, so that they could make them um, also. And I realized there's some people who just want to have one that they don't have the sewing skills, they don't have the, you know, they don't really want to do all that work, but they'll start cooking with it if they have it. And then there's people who want to do it um, as frugally as they can and use things that they have, and that's great. And so I've offered both audiences um, options ever since then, um, but that's how it initially got started. And um, ever since then, um, I've continued to teach classes. I've continued to try and blow the horn about it as much as I possibly can. Um, I've cooperated with, um, I don't know, have you met Cindy Miller? Uh, no, I've seen the okay. name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, she's a good friend of mine. I just talked to her yesterday. And um, yeah, we, so we were just talking actually. And I said, we were, I asked her, um, you know, why aren't more people doing this? And, you know, and, and really what it kind of boils down to that we talked about in our conversation is that um, number one, they just don't understand how important it is. And number two, it doesn't hold, it, it, it's, it's so simple of an idea um, that, it, it just kind of flies over people's heads. Um, and honestly, this is historically something that people have used for years and years and, you know, over, you know, ever since, you know, the beginning. I mean, I, there, there are people also cook in the ground. They cook all different ways. You know, there's all different ways that we in our society are so, um, I guess we're just so blessed to be able to have so much that we have forgotten to realize that we have control over ourselves but we don't have control over the weather and we don't have control over, uh, really, we don't have control over the fuel that we have being brought to our homes. Um, if we want to be able to be able to feed our families, we've got to have a lot more than just that. Sure. And how long ago was it when, when so. you first put it up there for sale? Uh, is that a few years back? Uh, no, I think I started selling them, I think it was probably 2013. I oh, think. wow. Okay. So yeah, 11, 11 years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I, I believe, well, let me think here. It might've been actually, no, I'm sorry. I think I did my big sale thing for the cost um, in 2015. And then I think I started selling it in 2016. So oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. But still so, eight, nine years. Yeah. 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 So it's been a while and um, everywhere I go, I mean, it's just interesting because um, the concept itself, which I'll go into in just a minute is something um, that people just um, need to be introduced to it. They just need to be educated, and then they get it. Sure. But on the fuel thing, I just had yeah. an interview with a guy who's got a web uh, yeah, podcast called The Great Simplification. Oh, okay. And you can probably guess what it's about. It's like, hey, you know, if oil finally yeah. does run out, we're going to have to simplify our lives, mm -hmm. do the simpler stuff that everyone did before us. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so, uh, we're humans. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'll have to look him up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and talking of that, it's, it's interesting because we don't think about it either, but we have to kind of completely adjust the time schedule that we arrange our meals. Mm -hmm. I started our meals today at about 7 a.m., and that's when the sun starts shining, and you only have really hot, you know, sun hours until about 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so 1, 2 o'clock, and then it goes no. until it goes down. So you've got to be able to utilize the sun when it's really the hottest and able to use it, too. So, sure. And we're used to having dinner at 5, 6 o'clock. Yeah. I believe that we have to change to, we'll have in my opinion, what I'll do for my family is <laughs> I'll have breakfast started the night before um, with something, you know, that's, that it can go overnight so we can have hot muffins or, you know, hot oatmeal, still cut oats or something like that first thing in the morning. And then I'll start my, my wonder oven and my sun oven for the day going through sure. different things like we're going to do today. Great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the, the, the uh, wonder oven. Uh, which, where do you want to start? And we'll move the um, well, let me just start over here because I've got my little okay. pillow here. All right, so 
So this is half of a Wonder Oven set. Um, this is the large pillow, and there's also a small pillow. Inside of it are just thousands of, of tiny styrofoam beads. It also works with shredded styrofoam. Um, it doesn't matter, um, but it does, it insulates the heat, losing heat at about six degrees per hour. Um, one thing that people don't um, always know is that when we turn on our crock pots at low, it's 190 degrees. So if we get our temperature to a 212 boiling point on anything that we cook, um, as long as we get it up to 212 and we lose six degrees per hour, that allows us to have a good number of hours to be able to cook um, using just this without being plugged into anything else. Um, and if you combine it with the solar oven at the same time, then you're able to um, save on your fuel even more. Yes. Yeah. So um, a lot of times um, I use these bins like this. Um, sometimes I will, so I'll, I'll start over a second. Sure. A lot of times I'll use these bins like these ones are right here, but sometimes I'll use a really large bin and I will just do multiple things all at once and put a whole bunch of pillows in. So this specific bin is not part of the, the process that is needed. Sure. Um, it's just a container. But um, you can also stack things um, with these pillows. Um, you can use it a lot of different ways. Also, these pillows are great um, for being able to save your food out of the freezer or the, or the refrigerator if your power goes out. Because yes. it'll hold, keep full, frozen things frozen and cold things cold also. Great. So, okay. Yeah. And what is in there right now? So in this container right here is muffins. Mm -hmm. um, I've got some muffins that are baking, blueberry muffins. Um, the really cool thing about that idea is that you can basically do any kind of any kind of muffin. It uses a lot of your food storage foods that you already have, um, and you're able to do it in a way that makes it so you can have it first thing in the morning and be able to have something you didn't even put effort into. Sure. It just stays warm the yeah. whole night long. So yeah. wake up and have something warm. And if, if it's at six degrees per hour, it can, it'll cook for another three, four hours, maybe five, depending on how hot. Oh, and yeah, like more like eight to 12. Like eight to 12. And so, mm -hmm. so basically, yeah, you can do the muffins, mm -hmm. and even though they're not, maybe they're below cooking temperature, but they're hot. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're... Yeah, they're totally fine. Yeah. As, as far as safe cooking temperatures, yeah, you've got, you've got a good, you know, eight to 12 hours yeah. worth of cooking time to be able to utilize. Sure. Um, now, what I'm doing with the sun oven is I, I'm jumping back and forth. Mm -hmm. to keep the temperatures hot and then be able to, and then using these, uh, using the Wonder Oven to be able to, um, to hold the temperature. It is losing a little bit of temperature. I move it back in there. It keeps on cooking, but that's how I, it with just one sun oven. I can end up with about four or five ent entrees, um, you know, in the number say, of I'd hours be, we've got. Just be juggling. So mm -hmm. you're in the right place at the right time. Maybe you got three or four of these in the, yeah. the cooker. Yeah. Re, re brings it back up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's, you're just playing around with it, but, um, using this tool and this tool, you know, on a sunny day, whereas if we're talking about a weather day where you don't have the sun, a wonder oven is your only way that you could actually make bread. You would have to use a source of heat, like a butane stove or something to bring the water up to temperature, sure. but you could still have bread, yeah. um, and not be, um, using, yeah. you know, the sun. Sure. So. Yeah, and that and that's where it mm -hmm. appeals to me is it doesn't matter what the energy source is. It's it's really I mean half the stuff here is just makeshifted different ways. I mean you can use so many things that you've already got, so yeah. it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Most of my um, well, let's see. I don't know about these ones. I've got one in there that's really old that was made from a tablecloth. <laughs> sure, sure. So yeah. So hey, I need to switch out it's, and yes. move our food into um, something else, and then I'll yeah. be right back. Okay. Now these circular things are just tart lids. Or tart bottoms, I guess you can say. Oh, sure, yeah. But, but they've kind of rusted, so I put some foil ah. where it goes against the food. Sure. Oh, man, that looks great. Okay. It's just a, a cooling rack. Yeah, it's a cooling rack. So, but I have to do it this duty. way or else they'll fall, they'll fall, so it's just a... Sure. All right, I've got... Let me check on that one to see how it's doing this one in. Okay. Oops. These are hot, hot, hot. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to look at this, put this one in. So this is a quiche right here. As you can just use up whatever. Yeah. Usually, 
people all eat it anyway and they like it. Okay. All right. And you can hear the, those insulation beads. Yeah. The, the big <laughs> Sifting beads. around. Yes. And let's look and see. Rice is doing pretty good. It is still needs some time, I think. Okay. Let's put this in with the chicken. Okay. Yeah, as long as you've got that dark metal, thin metal, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you use, which is kind of fun. It makes it kind of fun. You kind of feel like you're doing a science project all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. Well, and I, honestly, I don't know too many people that it tumbles to them. Yeah, you can stack things up. I mean, if you've got oh, room yeah. for it, put it in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the heat is just going to yeah. all take care of itself. Yeah. Purposely trying out brown rice today. Sure. Because it is takes so much longer to cook. I wanted to see how long so I can be able to tell people about it. Alrighty. See, and this is gonna be there. Just I can't think of any other questions. That's <laughs> that's the curse of already being fairly familiar with it. You know, having yeah, used them yeah. now for three, four years, and um, the, uh, I forget if we mentioned we talked about mm -hmm. this in our email exchange. Uh, someone posted an ad on the World Network, Solar Cookers World Network, fireless cookers from mm -hmm. the 1910s, 1920s. You've, you've mm -hmm. seen these, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and go through some of the yes. the do's and don'ts about retained heat cooking and how to make it work the best for you. Sure. Um, so retained heat cooking, it works the best um, if you have whatever pot or whatever you're cooking with is filled um, as far to capacity as you can so that the entire um, the entire container is heated. It all keeps itself a lot heated. It keeps itself heated a lot better that way. Um, it also works a lot better if you have um, a thin metal pot rather than a large metal pot if you're trying to conserve fuel. Again, that kind of goes along the same idea of how long it takes to actually heat the pot. And you want to try and keep it as minimal as possible, which is really awesome because it cooperates perfectly with Sun Oven. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> because that's the same thing with Sun Oven, um, is you want to keep the thin metal as much as you can. Um, now, there's some things that you're able to cook um, pot in pot method, which um, you, can you can cook with a skillet. You can cook like these things you're seeing right now. But when I pull out the bread, you'll see that that's a different method. That is um, where I have a large pot, and then inside of it, I have... Um, boiling hot water and then I have my bread is in a smaller pot that's a lot like this one right here um, that's called the Bain Marie pot. Um, I've tried other pots before but this one is the most economical to be able to buy um, and so I have these. I, I do um, sell them when I go to classes in person. I haven't sold them on my website quite yet but um, if anyone wants to contact me I'm happy to help them out with it um, but the problem with these is when you buy them online a lot of times the lids are um, sold separately and then when they, they usually come from another country and they sometimes don't get the right size <laughs> but you need to have a lid that actually fits it so as yeah. long as you can get a lid that fits the right size pot I use the 3.5 quart and I also use uh, the two quart size this is the two quart size sure. right here and you can basically so what you do is you'd make up your bread dough let it rise once then put it back in this pot with it being sprayed let the bread bread rise a second time and then it goes inside the larger pot with the boiling water around it oh, man. and it boils for about 10 minutes and then you put it into the wonder oven to continue cooking sure. so you have that surrounding water inside the bigger pot that is cooking the bread inside so and it's a really yummy steamed bread um it's a little bit different um, than we're used to because it doesn't have a crust but sometimes that's really good with kids yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway so i use these pots a lot for the pot and pot method i also use this if i'm going to do like a crock pot type of meat um if you've ever done meat in a crock pot and it falls apart this is the result that you get when you use a, a pot and pot method for that um today we're doing some meat but we're doing it in a little different way so that we can have a broth sure. to be able to make a gravy um but um this one is really great for that. Um, let's see. Another thing is that you want to make sure um, when you're cooking with retained heat that your lid is just as hot as the pot itself. 
Um, if the lid is not hot, but the pot is hot, you're still going to have, you need to have completely, the food completely surrounded by heat to be able to cook most effectively. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that, oh, that, that's a good point because I know after 90 cookers, mm -hmm. the ones that work the best, the, uh, the reflectors and the way mm -hmm. it's set up is the, the heat, the energy from the light is transmitted to the entire pot. Right. Like the Haynes uh, uh, panel cooker, he calls it a panel bollock because it's almost like a parabolic mirror. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it literally takes that sun and the pot is just big enough where pretty much anywhere the light's going to go, it's going to grab the pot, including yeah. the lid. Uh, right. It's got a glass lid so you can see what's going on. But uh, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, you have to make sure you can't just put the lid on it after it's already gotten ready to temperature. You have to make sure that it kind of has a chance. So a lot of times, well, I like in this example, um, I have a lid that I prepared ahead of time for the quiche that we're going to be pulling out. And I also had a lid that I prepared ahead of time to put on the, the chicken that we're going to be pulling out. Um, because I was doing some other things with those, those recipes that I had to do last, but I wanted to make sure that they were as hot as they could be when I pulled it out and put it into the wonder oven. So, and honestly, you cannot really... As, uh, everything, a lot of times in this world that we live in, we think that we have to have 350 degrees all the time. And that just seems to be what our recipes tell us, so we think that's the way it is. It's a lot more flexible, and it's a lot more fun, and it's a lot more, you know, it, it allows, you can make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> and it will continue, it'll forgive you. You can, you can do it. As long as you've got, you know, a 225 degree temperature, um, pretty much, you're keeping that, you know, that that temperature um, and then you're you know using these to kind of help hold the temperature I mean we have down to 160 degrees for safe right. cooking purposes right so you know even you know the 212 is great and we were talking about the 190 for the crock pot but we have clear down to 160 before it starts to get to be a danger zone and we want, we don't want to get in that spot at all yeah. but you can't really I mean as long as you get things up to a hot enough temperature you know the boiling point or even a little less than that because you know, I had my temperature going today for my son oven. I think I was at, at like 200 or something like that by 7:30. Um, you know, 7:45 or so. Sure, sure. I can still get things started. Yes. It's still it's still hot enough that it's going to be fine. Um, you don't have to always think that you can yeah. have to be at the 350. I'm so glad so. you made that point because in promoting solar cooking, mm -hmm. the the big thing is well, we only have a couple hours window. Well, no, if you got right. a couple hours of sun and the right cooker. Mm -hmm. You can get things going. And we just underestimate how um, powerful the sun is. Yeah. We come out here and it's, you know, 70, maybe 65 degrees or even less than, you know, and you can, I mean, within 20 minutes, you can have cooking temperatures, even at early in the morning. So sure. especially early in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's better to start that then than 11 or 12 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> when I, I put out my uh, mm -hmm. Sun Oven Villager, which is that big thing on a trailer, you know, mm -hmm. cook 40 loaves a better at a time. And a bunch of cookers like a son oven, the spore, mm -hmm. Hanes, and mm -hmm. and people walk by. Oh, that'd be great for camping. That'd be great for survival. And I kept saying, Yeah, it's not just for camping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 actually a. I I think it's better to have things become a normal life type of yeah. thing because. I mean, it becomes a part of your family story and your kids. At least my kids, they they've grown up with it and they you know, think that it's normal. Yes. And I want that for my next generation, sure. you know, to be thinking that is normal because I, I feel like it's abnormal for me to have grown up feeling like it's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do, do you ever, uh, maybe it's, maybe it's too late if you started that mm -hmm. far back, but show them here's our, here's our normal fuel <laughs> bill. Oh yeah. Okay, Ooh, so that's when you, a good get, idea. you go out on your own yeah. and you're paying 150, 200 for, for propane, mm -hmm. for your home heating and everything yeah. else, then you'll know yeah. why your mom was smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I show one experiment on my, um, on my, in my classes, um, by slideshow, I can kind of describe it to you sure. that kind of goes along with that. Um, I, it, in my, you know, I, I'm a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we are very, very focused on preparedness. Yes. Um, as many people know, um, we have, um, home storage centers where we sell, you know, different types of, of, food storage types of items. And these come in number 10 cans. And so I show um, four boxes of those home storage staple type of items. Um, one is um, six, so it would be six number 10 cans of beans, uh, six number 10 cans of white rice, six number 10 cans of oats, and then six number 10 cans of wheat. And 
very few people know that if you read through the cooking instructions that are on those cans, um, the number of cans of butane fuel that would be required to be able to cook those things are, is 41 cans. 41 cans of butane for, for those um, 16 cans worth of food. And most people have many, many more than just four boxes yeah. of food storage in their homes. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about fuel in that way, um, we really just don't, we're, not, we're completely out of touch with how much fuel we use. Even if we get a bill, yeah. it doesn't even matter. We still are completely out of touch and no one is, so is storing fuel. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, I mean, they won't, a, they won't let not you. adequately, I should <laughs> yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. You, can't, you can't rotate it. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, the fuel source that is renewable that we have, um, we can count on is the sun. Yes. And, um, you know, if we could utilize that, then, you know, we can supplement for days that we're not able to use solar cooking. Yep. But, um, you know, it, it's really not replaceable. We can't, we cannot effectively cover that, that amount of needed fuel. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, it's completely opposite than the fear. And it's, yes. it's more along the lines of um, being organized because we have the capacity to be organized if we so choose. We, have, we decide to put our energy into that um, so that we can be able to be self-reliant. Yeah. And not yeah. only that, but it's also the acquiring the skills and the knowledge. Yeah. I'm 100% confident that we'd have no problem to be able to feed our family yeah. if, we, yeah. if we needed to. And that comes from practicing and making time uh, and just you know, living with it, like you mentioned, um, and, and knowing you know, that, okay, I don't need to be worried about this. It's not something so, you know, and in a time where if we were to have, you know, some chaos and we had to go through a time of, of you know, no power plus, you know, social chaos or whatever might ever else be, be happening, at least this area is solid. <laughs> and this is a pretty important area to be solid in that everyone can do that. They can just incorporate it into their daily lives, make it a casual, enjoyable, fun thing. Because yes. I mean, I've homeschooled my kids uh, previously for a number of years. And, you know, this is a perfect science yes. <laughs> lesson. Um, and, you know, they get to see, you know, how things work. And, you know, we can we can make it so that it is just normal. Yeah. And it's not it's not strange and weird. Do you have a, like a specific minimum thickness that it should be enveloping the pot? or uh, About two to three inches. Okay. Yeah, and I actually yesterday, so I was talking to Cindy Miller yesterday. Um, she does a um, retained heat cooker that is called the Hope Sack. And she has a project called the Hope Sack Project. Um, she's actually taken them over to Kenya and helped with um, some humanitarian work over there um, with these. And we were, I was asking her, you know, what's the, um, what's the amount of foam or, you know, insulation that you find and it's the same uh, so yeah. two to three inches is sure. about the same after a certain point it's mm -hmm. a lot of diminishing returns right I mean, right yeah. yeah and so that's kind of why um it doesn't i, I mean you're able to stack you're able to you know yeah. I, I there's some people who have um the same idea as the, these wonder ovens but they are like snowmen almost um and they don't use a container they just stack i had a friend who is completely off grid up in alaska who who would do that um, sure. and she just had a corner of her room where she would just stack 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 and she that's how she was cooking um in my opinion the foam is so valuable you can more easily get a container and then be able to make more of these oven sets um so that you have more on hand with less beads but they, it goes either way um it will work either way it's not necessarily the container that makes the difference it's the foam beads and the amount of insulation and mm -hmm. i'm thinking of the with the thickness part maybe it varies a little bit by whether it's rags or like straw like the guy I visited mm -hmm. yesterday uh, mm -hmm. uh steven he says uh he actually has a, a straw bale cooker oh. a straw a oh. hay box cooker an actual it's, hay it's box actual hay. cooker yeah <laughs> for insulation yeah and i'm thinking well every household Mm -hmm. uh, ours included, mm -hmm. if you don't have at least a two inch thickness worth of old clothes, rags that mm -hmm. you're going to bring to, you know, Goodwill yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know, just mm -hmm. save them up for that and make one and start doing mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's not yeah. like it's. Yeah. And I've <laughs> seen people who've done that online, um, you know, with, with towels and different things like that. Um, and I, I, I'm sure that it probably works. I don't know. Um, the, the foam is, I, I, I believe it's a little bit better of a yeah. insulation 
tool um, because it is foam and it just kind of, and what happens is those beads and those or the shredded or whatever it just meshes together and you just can't get yeah. um, heat through but uh, I think you'd be I mean there's lots of people who do it all different kinds of ways and they they seem to be fine and they seem to show up results that say, are showing us that they work so I think the one pot holder the one of the two is it's mostly like a not polar tech but it's kind of that mm -hmm. material which is already yeah it's almost like a, a cloth mm -hmm. uh, polystyrene or whatever form, yeah you know just yeah. cloth wool yeah 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 I, s I have a picture that i share in my classes that shows a, a kitchen drawer that people uh, that someone has used and they have you know a wonder oven set in there and so they just made it part of their kitchen too i mean i think that's kind of cool and back in Austria in the, you know, post, or well, actually pre-World War II, like right, right in the same time period, uh, when they would build homes there, they actually had thermal cookers that oh. they built into the homes because they were expecting to have fuel shortages Mass and they were mass. trying to let the help Making people to be able to have it. It kind of looks like a tall kind of garbage can a little bit sure. thing and they just open it up and put their food into it. And yep. yeah, so there's a lot of different ways, you know, to just, you know, incorporate it into your regular life and also you know make it user friendly sure. yeah there's there's ways though you know if you're able to get a hold of a foam source which i've realized as i've gone from city to city there is a usually a foam type of manufacturing facility or you know t some type of of facility that uses foam in their manufacturing everywhere yeah and we live here in eastern washington which is not a really super large area um, it's not a los angeles or a, or a seattle or a houston um, but i within i think it's about 60 miles from here i found you know a foam you know manufacturing facility oh, wow, okay. where i'm able to so really if anyone wants to be able to make their own um, and i suggest having you know 10 to 15 of these sets because like i said i, I depend on it to, to be able to save my food from my freezer my you know refrigerator on top of lots of cooking like this um, you could make it yourself and I, I also help people to be able to have you know sewing projects and I teach people how to be able to sew it yep. but you could very easily get a group together locate the foam and be able to do that yeah so it's it's a project but and you want to have multiple people who are going in on it with you because they're yeah. large yeah. <laughs> amounts yeah. that they yeah. sell usually but it's totally doable and it's a lot more affordable yep. But remind me now, you you will sell a made one, and you, mm -hmm. you you sell a kit where you can they can make it themselves with the cloth that you already have. Um, so I drop ship the beads if they are not able to find beads on their own. Yeah. I have a I have a source where I'm able to drop ship beads to oh, people's nice. homes, and then I also um, sell and then I send them. I I sell the the sewn pillows already to be filled with beads if they don't want to sew, yeah. and then I also sell the completed. Um, the completed sure, project sure. if they want just the completed sets sure. to be able to do that and uh yeah i mean i there's a lot more i i have in plans to do i just haven't been able to get it out there but that's what i offer right now yeah well i can't yeah. think of any other questions that was the last one really like popping in my brain just to remember mm -hmm. that but you know thanks for the mm -hmm. for prepping so much You're welcome. and i'm thinking to myself it might be something like, well, this is routine. So, like, mm -hmm. you would have done it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I would have. And, I, you know, even when we had Thanksgiving just in, you know, in November, I keep the, it's winter time outside, and I will have my big bins with all of my Wonder Oven sacks, you know, to keep things warm as I'm trying to sure. work and things like that. It just, it's so, you know, nice to be able to have basically a warming oven anywhere you want it to be yes, yes. <laughs> and you know to be able to use them for all different kinds of things and in Houston uh, we used to have our kids in swim team and we would have to be there for like five six hours at a time in blazing hot weather in the summertime and, and so Houston. I would wrap one of these pillows <laughs> up and put um, like lunch meat and cheese and whatever needs to stay cold straight from the fridge put wrap it up and kind of put a bungee cord around it and then take it with us you know for lunch purposes and you know four or five hours later whatever we decided to eat lunch we could pull it out and make sandwiches and everything was nice and cool yeah. and then you know also you know saving ice cream um, we've also had we've had frozen hamburger patties we had to make it from here to a we made a 12-hour trip down to Idaho for a family reunion type thing and we were in charge of of the meal once like basically right when we arrived so we brought frozen hamburger patties with us and brought them you know in the wonder ovens and they stayed cold and nearly frozen the whole way down um so you know it's just it's a really nice way to live that you find out you've got a lot more capability to do things than you thought yes yeah
Well, thank so, you. You're so welcome. Much. Thanks for coming. Yes. All right.